Applications for the Fulbright US Student Program are due every year in October. In this video, I'm gonna go over the timeline of starting your application. We're gonna talk about if you are starting your application now, if you are starting your application early, or if you are starting your application late and the pathways to take. So let's dive in. It can take months or maybe even years to put together a strong Fulbright proposal because you might have to learn a second language, you have to have contacts in the host country if you're applying for the research study award, or you have to also get letters of recommendations. It's not something you can pull an all-nighter and accomplish. So we're gonna talk about when you should get started on the Fulbright application. You are eligible to apply for a Fulbright your final year of undergrad, as long as you graduate before the start of the Fulbright grant. I think the best time to start working on a Fulbright proposal is over the summer between your junior and senior year of college. That way you turn in the application in October and then you start the grant a year later after you graduated from undergrad. Unfortunately, I hadn't heard about the Fulbright until after I already graduated from college. So I started working on my Fulbright application right after I graduated undergrad. While I was also looking for jobs and living at home, I had a lot of free time to do research on my host country, study a language, and do outreach with potential host affiliations. So it was a great time over that summer working on my Fulbright application. There are actually two pathways for applying for the Fulbright US Student Program. You can either apply through your university, and that's for students who are enrolled currently at their university, or for recent graduates or alumni, your university might allow you to apply through them even after you've graduated, or you can apply at large, meaning that you are not applying through your university. If you're applying at large, you actually have more time for the application, and you don't have to go through an interview, so you have some some extra time. If you are applying through your university, your university will have an on-campus deadline. If you're looking into applying for the Fulbright now, the first thing you wanna do is go on the Fulbright US Student Program website, look up your university campus deadline, and look for the contact information of your Fulbright Program Advisor, the FPA. Campus deadlines vary, but they can be as early as August and most universities also conduct some sort of interview process before you submit your final application to Fulbright in October. If you're applying through your university, you wanna look up the campus deadline and reach out to your Fulbright program advisor immediately so you can learn about the on-campus resources for applying for the Fulbright award. Universities all have a different process for applying through the Fulbright, so you really need to know what the requirements are at your university. For example, at my university, the campus deadline was the middle of August and you had to turn in something final. They did not let you make changes to your application after you submitted it in August. However, many universities, the campus deadline is asking just for a draft and they'll give you time to go in and change your application, change your essays all the way up until the deadline in October. So when you talk to your campus Fulbright advisor, ask upfront if that deadline is a hard deadline, like they want the final, or if that is a soft deadline and they give you time to make edits. That can make a really big difference in if you choose to apply through your university or apply at large. Because I was a recent graduate, I had the option of applying through my university or applying at large. You can check out my article linked below about whether or not to apply at large or through your university if you have the option. So let's look at this timeline working backwards from the due date. It can take months to apply for a Fulbright because you might not be sure which country you want to apply for. You might need to study a language if you're applying for a country that requires you to know the host country language. And it could take months to come up with a research or project idea if you're applying for the research study award. That's why I recommend getting started the summer before the application's due in October. If you're getting started around May or June, the first thing you wanna do is some brainstorming and background research on the country you want to apply to. You also wanna do some research on topic areas of interest. For example, I was interested in doing something around public health and urban planning. That's a very, very broad topic, but I speak Spanish, and so I was looking into various programs all over Latin America to see which program might be the best fit for my interests. 
I spent about a month brainstorming different project ideas for projects in Bolivia and also projects in Brazil. I ultimately decided to apply for Brazil over Bolivia because Bolivia only accepted two or three people a year and Brazil accepted more than 30 people for the research study award. So I knew I had a better chance in Brazil over Bolivia. If the country you're applying for requires a language evaluation, then you'll wanna start brushing up on those language skills if it's been a while since you've practiced that language or if you are brand new to the language. I had never formally studied Portuguese, but Brazil said that they would accept Spanish speakers who had begun the study of Portuguese. So I got a Portuguese book and I started studying Portuguese on my own to prepare myself for the language evaluation. And I made sure not to do my language evaluation until September so that I got months to practice Portuguese before taking my evaluation. You can check out my blog post with lots of tips on how to start studying the language on your own, even if there's not any classes around you. If you are applying for the English Teaching Assistant Award, you do not need a host affiliation. And that actually saves you a lot of time on the application and means you don't need as much time in preparing the Fulbright application. However, if you're applying for the Research Study Award, most of the time you need a host affiliation, meaning an in-country affiliation. This could be a university, a library, a museum, something like that, an organization that is going to be your host and and help give you access to whatever you need access for to accomplish your research. My affiliation was a public health nonprofit and I had a second affiliation with a university, but it took me months of outreach to find these organizations. Um, I spent lots of time doing research on different organizations that I found were interesting and I would email people at those organizations, wait to hear back from them, try to schedule calls to see if they would be a good fit for me. And so it took a lot of outreach to find an organization that was a good fit for me. However, if you have been to the country before, you have connections in that country, this might not take you that long. For me, I couldn't even start drafting a statement of purpose until I had my host affiliation secured because so much of the work that I was planning on doing was linked to doing it with my host affiliation. So once I had secured my host affiliation, I then started working on drafting my statement of purpose and my personal statement. If you're applying for the English Teaching Assistant Award, you only need one essay instead of two. So it might not take you as long as when you're putting together the research statement of purpose. I secured my affiliation in August and then I basically spent all of September writing my statement of purpose and my personal statement. I did many drafts. It's very similar to writing a grad school statement of purpose or personal statement where you want to go through many revisions. You want to ask many people for feedback. Um, so that probably took me about a month, six weeks. And I was perfecting those things right until the deadline, until the day everything was due. Once you have a decent draft together or a good outline of what it is you plan on doing for your Fulbright, then you wanna reach out to people to ask for a letter of recommendation. Generally, you want to ask for letters of recommendation about six weeks in advance. It's great if you can send them an outline of your statement of purpose, even if you don't have the final thing written, so they have a good sense of what it is you're applying for and that they can speak to that very specifically in the letter of recommendation. You can check out my other video on asking for letters of recommendation. If you're applying through your university, your university will likely schedule interviews with you about a month before the October deadline. In the last few weeks, you just wanna make sure you have everything organized, you've crossed all your T's, dotted all your I's, you've finalized everything and get it ready to submit. The Fulbright website historically crashes on the very last day and so do not wait to submit your application the day it's due. And it, the portal closes at exactly the time it says it's gonna close and they will not reopen it or accept late submissions. Let's talk about if you are not ready to apply for the Fulbright this year and you are just looking into it for a future year. Say you are in your first or second year of college. There are many things you can do early in your college career that will increase your chances of getting a Fulbright. For example, many Fulbright awards require you to be familiar with the host country language. You can plan to start studying a second language now while you're in university or plan to study abroad, which might inspire your future country selection. 
For example, I spent a summer doing a volunteer project in Brazil. I loved Brazil and when it came time to apply for the Fulbright, I knew Brazil would be a great choice for me and I already had some basic Portuguese because I spent a summer there and I also had some contacts that I could reach out to when I was first starting to look for a host affiliation. If you're interested in doing a research award, you might even take a research methods class when you are an undergrad. Or maybe while you're taking classes, you discover you are really interested in a topic and you want to explore it further. For example, you might be taking a class on like global health and you find out there's some really interesting things happening in a certain country. Keep that info in the back of your mind. And then later when it comes to applying for a Fulbright, you can see how might you explore that topic for a whole year on a research grant. So it's never too early to start thinking about applying for a Fulbright. Finally, I want to talk about a late start application, meaning you're trying to throw together an application in less than a month. A Fulbright is not something you can pull an all nighter and do. It really does require a lot of thinking, but for a few people, it's possible to put together a Fulbright application in a few weeks. If you are applying for the English Teaching Award, you actually don't need as much time to put into those applications because you don't have to find a host affiliation. So if you're applying for a country where you already meet the requirements of the language and that sort of thing, you can probably put together an application pretty quickly. You do still have to ask for letters of rec. And although, you know, I told you six weeks is a good time to ask, you can definitely ask last minute for letters of recommendation. There have been a few times in my life where I've asked for last minute letters of recommendation, like the week something was due and people have said yes. And as someone who writes lots of letters of recommendations, most of the time I do not write the letter of recommendation until the week it's do anyways. And so a lot of people, if they're around, they're available, they have time, they can accommodate a last minute request. However, you know, some professors might be busy, they might be on sabbatical. So you probably need to ask more people. You might not get your first choice. If you're applying for a research study award, it's a lot harder to put together an application in less than a month. However, if you already have a topic idea and a host affiliation, you can definitely put together an application quickly. This might work well for say uh, a PhD student where you already have a research focus, you know what your research is about and you already have connections in the country. You've already maybe worked at with a university before and it's easy to have someone throw a letter together for you. In those cases, you can get something together very quickly if you already have that experience and those connections. If you are required to have a language evaluation, then you do need to try to get that scheduled ASAP. Pretty much any professor of the language is qualified to give you the language evaluation and you find that person yourself. So you can do a lot of outreach to as many professors as it takes to see who can accommodate you for a last minute language evaluation. If you are on campus, that's, you know, you can do go through your university, but if you're not enrolled in a university, you can also email professors at universities really anywhere in the country to see if someone one is willing to give you the language evaluation. In the end, if you're not able to get together all the elements for this application cycle, you can save those things and work towards applying the following application season. Check out the additional resources I've linked below on applying for the Fulbright. You could also sign up for my newsletter where I send out a lot more tips on applications like these.